joined by Kieran Lucid here, the man behind the All Ireland League. Kieran, a great presentation, I have to say. Um, I think I got the feeling though that perhaps maybe you're starting to lean more more towards a split league. I know your your proposal, your you would be in favour of a, a full All Ireland League, but it seems the Northern clubs maybe aren't as behind that um, proposal, and maybe a split league might be at least a starting point for this proposal. Would I be right in saying that? Um, so the Irish FA back in October did say that they were against a what was proposed um, to them, so which was the, what we call the Danish plus style approach. So I think a full all in league, it's probably fair to say, wouldn't enjoy the support of the Irish FA, and, and it's probably fair to say also that of many of the Northern Irish fans. So I still like. I guess where I'm coming from is that when you when you show the fans the the data of where the the leagues are at the moment relative to say other other leagues that quite a gap has emerged and is probably going to grow unless something radical is done. So I'm coming at it from that basis. And many of the fans who are against it tend to change their views once they see that. So it's a question of whether we can get the message out there and make the case for change well enough for them to come to agree with us or whether they remain wholly uh, against the idea. Well, not wholly, but many of them against the idea. So we can't predict which which uh, which outcome they will go for. But what we can say is that over the next two months with Hypercube, we will be taking everyone's views on board, all the stakeholders, to see what would be their preference, and then also for Hypercube to run their simulations with the data from the clubs to see both what's best from a sporting point of view, from a commercial point of view, and then finally to see what's, what's palatable for the fans and the football authorities. I think a lot of people thought when the um, NIFL clubs released that statement in October, perhaps that was one of the final nails in the coffin, but you've revealed to us today that you've had very positive talks with the, the Northern Irish clubs and the uh, IFA in recent uh, days and weeks. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I think was it there's 12, obviously 12 NIFL um, membership clubs and uh, two came out against it, but the others have, have said they wish to remain involved in the process and we've been speaking to NIFL championship clubs as well. The Irish FA, we, we met with them. I would say it was a constructive discussion. They're still against the full all Ireland League, but they're eager to hear results, the outcomes of the study, and we hope to meet them again in the coming weeks to see, to show them our results and to, to you know, to obviously to, to discuss the project and to see is there any form of cross-border competitions, cups, leagues that, um, or hybrids that could try and give the game a boost whilst respecting their independence, that's that's the key. And now a key for this whole project has been there's two national sides, that was never, and threat, or two, even two cups, the Irish Cup and the FAI Cup was always, even in the all league approach, was we're always going to be separate. Mm. But, yeah, we have to respect those views. You mentioned cup competitions there and perhaps a, an All-Ireland Cup competition, but, you've, again, you've said it here today, you don't want to be involved with something that wouldn't have a, a sport and goal at the end of it, i.e. a European place or a very, very vast uh, financial incentive for the clubs. Yeah, so, so an All-Ireland League or All-Ireland competition isn't the goal of the project. The goal is to, is to try and close the gap and try and get clubs north and south going further in Europe and into group stage competition, big European nights, big... You know, proper transfer fees, proper reimbursement for the clubs, and facilities for the fans as well. So that's the goal, and the All Ireland League is, is is kind of a a mechanism for that. So I, I guess, yeah, I, I guess we, we wouldn't want to be associated with the competition. We wouldn't want the result of all this, whatever it is, two years of work, mm. to be a competition that doesn't reach that goal. That's really the test, not not the format. It like. So what the name of it or what exactly the outcome is, we can't say yet if we'd be happy with it, but it, our litmus test is, does it solve the problems that face the game here? And if the answer to that is no, then we would want to support that. Um, I'm not going to run through everything that we've discussed here today. I know you've had a very long week travelling and everything, but uh, one, of the, one of the issues that, that wasn't raised there, with Brexit coming up, there is a possibility that less Irish youngsters might be able to go to the UK uh, and join English academies. Do you think that can be a big benefit for, for Irish clubs? Ooh, um, look, we obviously considered Brexit as, as kind of um, a kind of a exogenous issue, shall we say? But we haven't we haven't um, we, we tried to keep our eye on the ball, so to speak, and, and control the controllables, and that's something that we can't control at the moment. We think Brexit, or either, otherwise, we think this could would benefit the, the clubs here so and we only have to respond to the facts i don't think many people much in much higher positions than i um, are still unclear about how brexit will pan out so we kind of just try and keep it positive what we do try and do when we're speaking to say commercial bodies even football bodies um, and maybe peace bodies is that 
this project could be a good news story that could lead the kind of divisive politics over the yeah. last couple of years, and, and it would be something that, say, brands might want to attach themselves to. So, if anything, we try and use Brexit to our advantage. Final couple of questions. Um, it's a bit of a strange situation that's developed in, in recent weeks with the whole FEI and, and new faces coming on board. Niall Quinn been one of them, and he was obviously a man that had very different proposals to yourself uh, for the future of the League of Ireland. So, how do you think that relationship might work going forward? Um, what have been the initial feelings in, in your meeting you've had with the, with the new FEI, if we want to call them that? And uh, if you can give us any updates on, you've mentioned in the past, about television deals and, and companies you've spoken to. Have you still been in contact with them? And what's the initial feeling in regards to media coverage if this league was to, to take off? So we've met with the new administration in the FEI. It was, it was an extremely positive meeting. The FEI's remit is to is the health of, 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 the, of domestic football. And obviously they have to proceed on one track and, and control their controllables. And the IFA's view on, on formats isn't, isn't something they can control. So they have a duty to continue to restore the league to health. At the same time, they showed re they, they expressed real interest and support, I would say, almost for, for an all-island competition because they think they agreed. We showed them the, the similar numbers that we've shown the other stakeholders of the, the kind of the... The, the rather dire situation borne out in the data in terms of uh, the underperformance um, of, of the, the clubs financially. So they, I, I think they would welcome anything that could help restore the league. In terms of the discussions with the commercial stakeholders, we had a, a commercial stakeholder meeting yesterday in the Aviva Stadium with broadcasters and sponsors. And it was a very similar positive picture. And the work of Hyper Cube will focus on quantifying what the, the marginal difference is between option A, B, C and C. And if option A is worth X million and B is 90% of that, you know, B might be a much better idea because it's, it's more palatable, but if it's 30%, that's yeah. a different story. So it's, it's, it, that, that would be all considered over the next two months about trying to test the market for the appetite for whatever cross-border competition everyone decides to go for. Kieran, thanks for speaking to us. Um, it's very clear you want to be very uh, transparent about what's going on. So, can you, if you want to tell uh, our viewers where you can keep up to date with what is happening with the AIL? Sure. So, allislandleague.com is is basically our website. I think it's, it's quite bare at the moment. We try and focus on Twitter or on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. So, All Island League. If you search for that phrase on on Twitter, for example, you'll see all our videos. And if you scroll back, you'll see the start where we try and make the case for for change. We try and articulate and visually why we think we need to do something different. So we would welcome fans to email us as well, also on info at allislandleague.com. Don't be a stranger and engage and give us your views as well. Kieran, thanks for speaking to us.